Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the World Through a Lens podcast. I'm your host, Bill Rosato, and I have a great interview for you guys this week. Uh, I got a, the enormous pleasure to sit down with Richie Eastis, the co-founder of Toast Interactive, the creator of Richie's Plank Experience, to talk about his new game, Max Mustard, which is currently out. So go buy it today on the Quest Store. It was a genuine pleasure to sit down and talk with him. He he was a, he's a real, real great guy, a real genuine, wholesome guy, and and uh, I hope that comes through in the interview. So for the people that don't know you, uh, why don't you give us a little bit about who you are, kind of how uh, Toast Interactive came to be, a um, little backstory from Richie's Plank Experience to Max Mustard, and what you guys are making now. Sure. So. A whole heap of years ago, we, we made Richie's Plank. We, we thought, oh, yeah, if it was just my wife and I, we thought, oh, okay, if this sells a 1,000 sales by the end of the year, we'll kind of do it full time. And it did that in the first weekend. And then we hired our first employee to make it look good. And then cut forward seven years, we're now uh, about to release our – first proper game our second title max mustard and there's 30 something employees to join the ride with us and we're like what the hell i can't believe it and what um because you you could have kept making experience like games you know but Mm. you decided to make a full flush flushed out game and what was that what 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 was that transition was it you knew that was going to be the path or was there like a stalling period after Plank Experience? There's a couple of stories here. I, Tony and I sometimes joke, Tony's the CEO, or sorry, Tony's the uh, co-founder and ex-CEO and um, my wife. Um, we joke about when we first had our coffee shop meeting about starting this company, we're like, we can probably do one game every two months. <laughs> <laughs> And we're like, oh, we got that wrong by about seven years per game. And then, (laughs) so that's the funny story. But the deep story is like, I was thinking this just like a few days ago. And I'm like, holy crap. The thing that's driven me to make this game and commit so much to it personally and financially is I've got imposter syndrome. Like a lot of people get it, right? And because Richie's Plank, you get the odd review. This isn't even a game. One star. Oh, and I'm like, okay. Oh, okay, I get what well, you I know it's not a game, but because it's not a game, it's an experience. And yeah, yeah. I, the one star annoys me, but they're right. It's not a game. And so I feel like an imposter. I, I, I feel like I haven't made a game yet. So that's just driven me. I'm like, I am going to make a game and it's going to be a great game. And so I, yeah, I think that was one of the big um, drivers, but probably the biggest driver is we just daydream about people's reactions when we make each part of the game. So there's 40 levels, but there was like over a hundred levels that were considered to make the final cut. And each part of the level, we're like, oh, how's the player going to react? And that's all we'd think about. Nothing else, really. Just what would make them excited at this part of the game. And yeah. Mm-hmm. And what was the what, what was the timeline from Plank Experience mm. to Max Mustard? Like, did was there a resting period where you were just kind of like taking yeah. in Plank Experience? So Richie's Plank was reasonable. We had five people. And we're like, the next phase is getting on the Meta Quest, or at the time, the Oculus Quest. And it was, mm-hmm. we were, it was reject, rejected. And we're like, oh, like we kind of need this. I yeah. could tell the headset was going to be a hit. And we did everything we could. We got them to change their mind soon after release. And we got on the store. And it's still one of their three games that is perennial. It's like top selling permanently kind of thing. 
there's not many yeah. other titles yeah. that were released back then and yeah when i was um when i when i was talking to my friends that aren't uh vr people i, w- I was saying oh yeah i'm gonna do this uh interview have you heard of like richie's plank experience because i always knew that that was one of the games it's it's like a four or five games that transcended from oh you're in the vr space i i know it from i know nothing about vr but i've heard of this right and i feel like everyone has seen a clip of oh yeah richie's plank experience um you know people just getting scared yeah. out of their minds or just diving off <laughs> into their tv or Follow something the safety like guidelines. That, you know? <laughs> please yeah um so the after the quest came out the sales were good we're like okay that's enough ports now we can do a, a game mm-hmm. we can make a game and we um we try to do you want to hear the story of how that came about how the next title came about yeah, um, yeah sure we're at a conference in la it was a long flight from australia mm-hmm. And the, the speaker was saying, you know, VR, it has to be it has to be first person. And I'm like, what? And then he said, yeah, no, third person games don't work in VR. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. But my favorite game at the time was a old classic called Hellblade on PC. And it, they did a VR version. I'm like, this is fantastic. And I didn't think much of it. It was just, just a game store. And then that, when that speaker was saying that, I'm like, huh. And then on the flight home, I was playing Mario Odyssey for the first time, and which is just brilliant. I love the old Mario games, and I just kind of started playing them again. And I'm like, I have to use my right thumbstick to turn the camera. And I'm like, wouldn't it be better, even better in VR, where you just intuitively turn your head when you want to look around? And so, mm-hmm. and I think around the same time, I think I'd, we'd played the Astrobot demo um, that came with the PlayStation VR. And we're like, this is uh, amazing. And we kind of just put three and three together and made a prototype. It felt great. And so we're like, let's do it. Um, let's make this game. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> this isn't the total story but i feel like from what i got from that was somebody told you hey you it has to be like yeah. this and yeah yeah you can't do this and you were like well you know fuck you watch yeah. me you know well there's also some business logic in that so i before yeah. i started making richie's plank I, I guess you could say i was in the entrepreneur space but on, successful entrepreneurs never call themselves that because they have a business mm-hmm. but I, so uh, I was in the travel industry business with like travel websites and I'd done that for a while and exited. But the business experience I had from that, I think was helpful in video games. And I used to, as an entrepreneur, when I was younger, I was unsuccess- very unsuccessful entrepreneur. And I was unsuccessful because I didn't have enough life experience or knowledge about business and things like that. And one of the things I did wrong was not figuring out what I can be the best in the world at. And so mm-hmm. when, I, when I learned about, and it's so obvious, right? Like, but in successful businesses are usually successful because they found out a way to be the best in the world at something. And it can be a niche. Yeah. And it can be the smallest niche you can think of. And anyone can think of something they can be the best in the world at if they get the niche small enough mm-hmm. or unique enough to them. And... Uh, the other issue I had was, uh, as an entrepreneur, a, an unsuccessful entrepreneur, was the worst. Um, the worst enemy of a good idea is a different good idea. And mm-hmm. so, you start to work on something, and you get distracted by a different good idea, and that like, lack of focus means you don't end up getting it to be the best in the world at something, and therefore you won't be successful. So bringing that philosophy into the video game industry, it's like um, what is a game that we can make that we can hand on heart say this is probably the best uh, in the world at this thing. Um, and 
and commit enough time and money to, to pull that off. So with Richie's Plank, it was, oh, yep, yeah, we can do this. It'll be the best game in the world at giving the strongest possible emotion in the shortest possible time. And there's games that give strong emotions, but they're not usually mm-hmm. as strong as the one in Richie's Plank and definitely not in the sh- as, yeah. like within the minutes that it can happen, um, like Richie's Plank. So I think we tick the box for that one. Um, I will be the first to say that that claim is false or wrong, but I just honestly don't know which one would, would beat it yet. Um, Max Mustard, the VR platformer, it's not as clear cut as that. And there's definitely going to be gray areas mm-hmm. and debates because Astrobot, in many ways, is a better game than Max Mustard. I mean, it's, it's, it was groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. It's, it's quite an old game now, but it's still it's going to stand the test of time forever. It's like an instant classic. It's brilliant. It was the first to do the f- first person interactions with a three D platform with a um, third person character, and they deserve all the credit in the world for that. Um, so, I guess um, our claim will try to be the best open platform um, action platformer. That's that's our goal. And I will always encourage debate on that. Um, so mm-hmm. that philosophy of of selecting to make a a VR platformer was not just that though. It's also you need to make mm-hmm. make enough sales, and so you have to look at your competition. And we looked at the competition, and every studio we found were making um, nearly first person shooters. So we're like, yeah. well, let's not do that. Um, let's yeah. let's do something that others aren't doing. Um, so that's if the experts are saying not to do this, then maybe that would be a good one to do. <laughs> Did Moss in, inspire you guys at all? Did you take a look at that game at all? Because I, I I would personally like I, said, I never played Astrobot, so I would pinpoint Moss as the closest. To your yeah, kind of wow. game right now. Wow, okay. Um, so I think Moss is brilliant. And I will definitely not say anything bad about it. Mm-hmm. It's not my type of game. So I have played it and I played a few levels and I was like, wow, this is really special. It's beautiful. Um, just gives you the nice feels. Um, and I would say it feels like a puzzle platformer mm-hmm. and you know in if if and whereas um max mustard is more like astrobot or a mario game where it's action platforming mm-hmm. there's maybe two or one puzzle moment in the whole game and it's pure action there's no mm-hmm. thinking about it still it's you have a gadget that shoots plungers there's a balloon with a a weight on it and you pop the balloon the weight goes down onto a seesaw and it launches the hero and that's on this level about um seesaws it's a seesaw themed mm-hmm. level and so that's as puzzle as it gets really and so i ah, uh, that's right a good analogy is you know the some classic mario games i think mario 3d world it's got puzzle platforming as bonus levels and i'm like Ah, oh, that's that feels more like a puzzle platformer to me, whereas mm-hmm. the Mario levels are more action. And some people are going to be like, "Ah, oh, I just love the puzzle platformers," and they're going to definitely prefer Moss. And I would recommend that they buy Moss, and I recommend they don't buy Max Mustard. Like, I, and we do that with Richie's Tank. We'll recommend when not to buy their game. Um, but with, uh, but if you're more like the action platforming, then I would probably recommend Max Mustard because it's more mm-hmm. of an action than platform um, puzzle. For for people that aren't in the VR space, maybe listening to this, what is the closest game you could relate this to outside of VR? So for our level layout, 3D Mario Land would mm-hmm. be, it's a 3DS game. wasn't super popular because not many people got the 3DS, um, but the levels are 3D, but mostly they're linear like as in it's like a street 
a street yeah. is straight, um, so it's linear, it has some bends in it sometimes, but you can go left and right, weave in and out of traffic. It's So it's got 3D um, movement as well. And so Mario Galaxy levels, I think Mario Galaxy 1, oh no, 2, is more like that. Um, and Mario Land is more like that, whereas Mario Odyssey, not so much of a good reference for us because their levels are more open. You can go any direction, okay. anywhere you want. Um, and that wasn't very compatible with VR, so we didn't do that. Um, and even, I think, for me, the levels play more like Mario than Astrobot. And everyone keeps talking and comparing our game to Astrobot. And I'm mm-hmm. so nervous about it because it's it has such a cult following. I'm terrified that people will buy Max Mustard and be like, "This isn't this isn't a sequel." I wanted yeah. more Astrobot, but there's 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 definitely similarities, but it's not. You're not going to get the same game, like. Um, and I think our levels play out more like a Mario level than they do the Astrobot levels. What was that? the the focus like the whole time because you you mentioned earlier about you know switching ideas and stuff is that from the get-go you're like okay this is going to be max mustard a platformer similar to mario let's go yeah so we just love the like um there's a chinese and japanese what's east asian really um uh poetry and Nintendo use that poetry philosophy in their level designs quite a lot. And so we adopted mm-hmm. that as well. And it's a very simple poem. It's something like um, an introduction. So you get introduced to a new mechanic. And then there's four parts. So the second part is then you get to play with that mechanic. Like just have fun with it. Just enjoy it. And that way you get to learn it a bit more. And then the mm-hmm. third part of the poem is... Um, it gets intense. There's something big happens, and that's where the levels get really hard in the third part. And in the final part, there's a surprise. So it goes back to a bit of fun again, but twists things around. So it's like a plot twist. Um, and that's um, we, did, we adopted the same design philosophy. And I think it shows the thing that people don't notice. But they they subconsciously notice in that we repeatedly get people saying, um, "Oh, I just wanted to keep playing," and mm-hmm. that cost us a fortune to get them to want to do that because. Yeah. The, <laughs> but no one knows why. It's just it's just a feeling, and that's because every level is completely different. It's not just, and I don't mean look different. I mean there's a new mm-hmm. mechanic. And that new mechanic needed new coding and new gameplay testing, new gameplay design, culled, get remove it if it didn't work and replace it with a better one. It just it was such an expensive process to do that for every single level. Mm-hmm. And there's actually multiple unique mechanics per level when we think about it. But it seems like such a simple thing. Like, oh, why would you do that, Richard? Just um just reuse your mechanics. Stop trying to do something new on every level. And I'm like, guys, if we don't do this, players might not finish the game or they might not want to mm-hmm. keep playing because, you know, when you watch a good TV show and you finish an episode and you're like, oh, that, that's a, I just want to have a quick look at the next one. That feeling happens in games if the next thing is going to be really different. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess that's what we did. And if the levels are too long, it, you might feel relief after finishing the level instead of feeling great after finishing the level. And so we, mm-hmm. our levels are like shorter than Astrobot most of the time. And it costs more to do that because we have more levels, but there's, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, nice, it's nice you could see like because like you said all the level design it's down a street and it's nice you could see the ending oh yeah get a perspective of how much longer you got to go really yeah and it feels exciting it's like um where we live 
in Queensland, there's lots of beautiful um, valleys. Like you stand at this lookout and there's this beautiful big valley and you can see multiple rows of mountains down the valley and it's like, oh, it's just breathtaking when you get a nice vista like that. And so when we were um, designing the levels, we had lots of tug of wars with our optimization team about what we should and shouldn't do. And they're like, hey, guys, we can't optimize these levels. Just put clouds to cover up everything and put gates to cover up everything. Like, just do them mm -hmm. every 20 meters or so, and then we can optimize the game. And I'm like, what? No. Like, I want to see the whole level. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so because it's like that's what makes it feel like you're on a big adventure. It's like, whoa, what's happening down there? It's a, such a small thing, but I'm like, and not many people notice and not always notice, but when they do notice, it's like a wow, it's like a subconscious wow feeling. And yeah, yeah that probably doubled the cost of our optimization to try to get that going. But um, you, you, do, you do have a, a couple levels though that I've seen that right parts of the, the map are shifted, either you're moving up. Oh. Um, or, you know, yeah. doors I'm not, are Yeah, are yeah, for sure. And... Yeah, it, it was never like a hard rule. It was mm -hmm. just a, gen, it was a general rule. If we yeah. wanted to go on an elevator ride or a Ferris wheel ride or, a, I don't know, take to go down a giant slide to get them to a new area, we're like, let's just do it. It's going to be a better game if we do that. We don't have to strictly mm -hmm. always see the end of the level. Yeah. Going back to the... the um repeating of the levels um i don't i don't know if i've gotten a repeat level i know i've gotten one at least the oh. uh audio blocks one yeah and there's one repeat I, yeah i, I is, is that is that is that the only one yeah the first time doing the audio blocks uh it was it was hard honestly i was yeah i was i was struggling through through the audio blocks and then second time i don't know if it was just because i failed so much on the first run but uh yeah second time through it was like it, it was a breeze i one tapped it but they were they were spaced out far enough where i was i wasn't like oh this is you know it's getting reused because of like laziness or something like that you know it was like oh it's a callback to to older and it's you know it, it, it felt it felt right the this the space we did that one as a second one because it was just so loved the first mm -hmm. one and the other reason is we hired um there's a there was a ted talk a few years ago by beatboxer mm -hmm. and it's still like the third most watched ted talk his name's tom thumb and he's from just down the road from us in um he's from brisbane by where we're from and when we were making the beatbox levels we we're like we should get we should get him to do our beatboxing. So we called up his agent, and he's like, "Yep, he's in." And so he made two songs for us, and we're like, "Oh, we've got to use the second one. It's too good to, mm -hmm. to throw away." And so that's why we um, the other reason we made a, a second beatbox level. But we wanted to be able to say, "Oh, there's a unique mechanic on every, every level." So that second beatbox level has the addition of the the turntables. Mm -hmm. And we're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I think we can get away with saying there's something unique on it. But, yeah, anyway, yeah. so this Tom Thumb guy, he is, I don't know, have a look at Tom Thumb TED Talk. <laughs> he, um, we have some surprises coming up after release with him and the game, so... Watch the space, yeah. Okay, is so you guys have DLC planned out for this game already? We have a or, couple. Or are, of, you, are you alluding to something else that's it, more soundtrack wise? Yeah, like that? we have some um, free DLC coming for Max already planned, already been worked on. Um, still getting um, polished. It'll be, and that will little bits will come out immediately after launch like that mm -hmm. that's more like improvements 
but the new content probably um, later in the year. But depending on the success of people enjoy the game and they're buying the game, we're going to be making more for do more for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our, our games are like babies and we want to care for them for a long time. That's good to hear. Yeah, I was going to say, is this another seven-year cycle until, <laughs> yeah. until the next one? Well, or? yeah, honestly. So I, I'm i pretty exhausted and mm-hmm. my wife, Tony, is too. We're like, this was a lot <laughs> and it was a lot yeah. of money. Um, we're going to see if other people want to run um, more of our roles there's a bunch of the team at GDC at the moment discussing, yeah, what should we do next? And there's lots of opportunities and yeah, it's just now choosing which opportunity our company, our studio should do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, would you ever repeat a genre like, or, or oh, yeah. each game is going to be something different? I think two different genres is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We could do these two genres for a while now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but Look, depending on what comes up, there's definitely room for more. A lot of studios, they make one game at success and then they go, yeah, but you don't, no one ever does it twice. I, I think if we, if we do pull it off, we're going to be like, okay, don't touch anything. Just mm-hmm. two, two is enough. But no, we, yeah. we have a list of games. And you, remember how I was talking about the, 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 on, um, the entrepreneur's philosophy. If anyone's interested yeah. in that, there's a book called The E-Myth. If anyone is in business, already in business or wants to start a business, get the book called e- The E-Myth. Really helpful. It changed it changed my life and way of thinking about business and things. So anyway, back to that. But using that, that business philosophy of selecting what games to make, we kind of came up with six games and... That hasn't changed in several years, mm-hmm. and we've done two of the six. And mm-hmm. so we got four, we got four more, and they still, yeah, they're still games that aren't done. That I would love to. I'm having a break. <laughs> so, so yeah. So so you said you wanted to have people shift into your guys's role. Would you still be full on into the games, or no? Or are so. You just, it, just calling it. I'm, you know, I'm done. No, let I, it be what it is. I'm still a shareholder, so mm-hmm. it won't be walking away totally. But there's a there's a job ad out on our website right now for creative director, which is my role, and mm-hmm. so we hope to fill that role. Um, who, and I've only got really one game under my belt. There's creative directors mm-hmm. out there with multiple successful titles and really good creative directors probably far better than i am and would love to get them yeah so oh, so my role after that um it will be more of a shareholder role um mm-hmm. and having whatever influence i i have as a shareholder um but i still i have to just keep my hands off because it's not a shareholder's job but they they're only able to nudge they're not able to direct and control yeah. otherwise it collapses the relationship and i can imagine myself doing like um prototyping role um t- prototyping it's what i enjoy doing the most um and do m- multiple prototypes multiple genres throw m- all of them away um until one sticks if you did move because you have your 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 uh what was it eight games you said there's six it, it, on the list six it, it, if you would want to still push those down through the pipeline yeah i, I would I, be, also I, I don't know your timeline on this i don't know yeah. you're like <laughs> no, eight games, I would, then i'm gone or something i would prototype them and mm-hmm. then we would field test them on people on the target market because each mm-hmm. game needs a target market and then Oh, can we talk about Max Mustard's target market after this? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And no, so, go, go in. Go, if you want to go into that now, <laughs> go, on, go ahead. Yeah, and so, yeah, we would field test them um, on people. Um, for Max Mustard, we, we did that by opening the doors to our office multiple times a week and people would come in and test our game and we'd, you know, make it a fun experience for them. And... 
yeah, we find out really early if it's going to work or not. And we probably mm-hmm. even do that before even making the prototypes. Like you say, you do a one sentence pitch on two different games to your type and pitch both to your target market and see which one. But they'd be like, oh, yeah, this sounds great. Yeah. And so you just pitch them um, that, I- that idea and scientifically measure it, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before you spend even a second of your time on in the game engines. Yeah. Yeah. And, and who, and who was that main target market for Max Monster? Ooh. So this is always surprises people and mm-hmm. I don't blame them for being surprised. So the target market is older males who played 3d platformers when they were younger. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say older. Okay. I mean like my age or around my age, like I'm 45, yeah. but, um, I think our target market was exactly 38. And so this is the part where it gets a bit weird and a bit unorthodox. And every time we met a new marketing person, they'd be like, oh, Richard, I wish I wish you spoke to me sooner because I could have told you that you're not meant to do it this way. I'm like, I know we're not meant to do it this way. but <laughs> And so do you know South Park? the TV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the creators did a public talk about story writing one day and it really connected with me. And one of the things he said was, we don't have a target market. We have a friend and his name's this and we make it for this friend. Mm-hmm. And he says, the benefit of that is it's so much easier to think about your target market when you think about one person and that one person is a representation of a target market. Doesn't mean, and not everyone is like that friend, but geez, it makes it easier to make a game for them or make a yeah. TV show for them because that's all they have to think about. And our level designers and artists and myself, we're so busy. We don't have time to think about our target market, but we do have time to think about this one person. And it's all of a sudden a fun activity. So this person, we made a Facebook account for them. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, Meta. We it's probably against the terms of service. Um, <laughs> um, just so we can put in their likes and dislikes and mm. what movies they okay, like. Yeah, you went you went all the way with it because I know yeah. that, that's a that's a common thing in in business to oh this age, um, you know Joe Schmo likes this this and this, but you you went full on. Here's his Facebook. Yeah. And some of the team Here, are here's, friends. With here's, him on here's what we think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he, his favorite movie is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Uh huh. Um, he played lots of different Mario games. He owns two different VR headsets. He works in tech. Yeah. He's got, he's got, got two kids now. He doesn't have much as much time to play games anymore as he used to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he doesn't want long levels, and that's why we have short mm-hmm. levels. And b- because if he's got 15 minutes, right, to play a game, he doesn't want a 25-minute level because then he can't finish it and get that satisfaction. But he does have time for like a seven- or eight-minute level. Mm-hmm. And so we're like, cool, let's just do that, but we make more of them, and that way there's more variety. Um and there's one level that has a throwback to one scene in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and that's all because that this guy, that was his favorite movie. Um, there's lots of little things like that. Um, and so he loved those classic Marios and Crash Bandicoot. And so we're like, that's going to direct our art style because he wants that nostalgia. And then... So people are like, well, Richard, why does it look like a kid's game? And well, we're like, there's two reasons. One is he's got kids and he wants a game to share with them. So because Mike has kids, we also have to consider his kids for making the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why there's no like handguns and machine guns and stuff because we're like, we don't want those in our game and we think we can make fun games without them. And there's enough shooting games already. So 
Yeah. Like they're, yeah. they're awesome. We don't need more awesome shooting games um, right now. And so, and then well, Richard, why, why did you make it look so um, like delightful? And we're like, well, we also want him to feel good when he plays a game. And if we want him to feel good and have that nostalgia, then what other art style can we do? Like we don't really have yeah. a choice. And so, um, yeah. And then someone taught us about there's a thing in the film industry called the four quadrant movie where there's not many of them that do well. Um, and that is movies that appeal to young and old and male and female. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, that's what that's kind of like what we're doing, even though we're making it for this one person. Um, uh, it he wants his whole family to enjoy it, so we have to make it consider that as well. And like an example movie is is um y- you know Wally Pixar film mm-hmm. Wally. It's like enjoyable by kids, and it's such a beautiful, deep story for adults. It's like, ah, oh, this is the kind of thing they would have had to go through when figuring out who their target market is. But yeah, so many different demographics love that movie. So I stand by our decision to make it for this one guy and some people. And so we, we did this knowing fully aware that some people will choose not to buy the game because they will think it's a kid's game. Yeah, and mm-hmm. we're like, far out. That just really oh, makes me sad. But I'm like, but it's the lesser of two evils. Like we, mm-hmm. we have to just do what we can to try to show people that it's not a made for kids game. It's a made for adults game that kids can enjoy. Um, and just hope that that message gets through. And we probably won't get it through to everyone before release. But I'm hoping after release if enough people share their experience with it, um, which I appreciate you doing on your YouTube channel. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, no problem. No, I, like, like I said, I was, or when we were talking uh, off recording that from the content I've seen so far, the reception is, is fantastic. Honestly. Um, I, I think this is really going to shoot up there as one of one of the staples as your first game, um, and it, oh, it, 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 it 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 it's crazy that you you went and described your 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 target market, um, because now playing it, I see I see all that I see everything that you just subs- described. You know the 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 funness of it, the shorter levels, um, it's. It's complicated, but it's not too complicated that it's just a a, a walk in the park or, or unbeatable, and it, it it really it really adds up. And I, I think I think it's fantastic so far from what oh, I. Oh my, that's so that's thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> let's uh let's shift more into the game. Okay. Um, tell us tell us about the the story. Um, kind of who the characters are and and what. What what is the point of the game? What are you achieving as Max Mustard? Yeah, so there's there's three different stories, I guess, told in different ways in the game. There's the the easy, super simple, typical 3D platformer story of something going wrong and you have to go collect three things in each level to save it. Mm-hmm. And so in this game it's um, cute um, like pets um, that have families and they're separated from each other like puppies and dogs and mm-hmm. the puppies being stolen um, permanently caged up to be sold to the super wealthy as a um, like a vanity item it's it's a bit silly but a bit kind of different and you have to re you have to free them from the cages and then they come and follow you and they follow you towards their parents who are at a cage at the end of the level. Mm-hmm. And then they, get, they reunite and they're all happy. And you do that on every level um, and it lets you unlock and proceed if you've freed enough of them. And that's, that's a pretty 
superficial story. There's not much. It's very typical. But as someone that enjoys platformers, I don't want more than that. Like, get mm-hmm. out of my way. I just want to play the game. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, we have a cut scene at the start to, to show that they're getting taken. Lots of custom animation for that. But then um, we get out the way and there's there's not really much more of that story because um, it doesn't need to be. It's just free the, mm-hmm. free the, free the little guys. Um, there's billboards and things that complement the story, but that's mostly it. But then um, there's a bit of an environmental story of why the ring on this, why, the, why, is, why is this ring there? And all the levels join up to form a ring around a planet. Mm-hmm. And that planet has suffered um, decades of um, fog and over pollution. The sun doesn't get to the ground anymore. And so they kept building giant skyscrapers and to escape the cloud and the fog to, to keep growing crops and things like that. And eventually the skyscrapers weren't tall enough either. So they had to build a ring kind of like in semi-orbit around the planet. And that ring is where this game is played. And that's, that's a little story there. And that can, you can get that from the billboards and some of the, some of the mail that you receive in the game. But it's not really a story you see unless you really look for it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there might be something we go into more detail afterwards because um, it's more than just a side story. And then, but then there's the main, deeper story of the game, and that is you receive fan mail. So when you finish some levels, you get um, uh, a little piece of fan mail, and the, there's a re- reoccurring fan named um, Charlie, Charlie Bunsen, and they have a problem with their family, a family member. Their family um, are a bit estranged. They don't have a good relationship with their dad. They're asking for advice, and you give them advice. Um, and it's a story people can relate to. Like, th- there's families that are really divided sometimes, and they don't have good relationships. And it's just always arguing mm-hmm. and arguing, and really for the sake of arguing. And it's like there's techniques you can do to overcome that. And we cover one of those techniques in the game. <coughs> And um, everyone doubts it, but it, um, I won't. I won't share what happens. And then there's a plot twist in there. Awkward stories need a little bit of a, a plot twist. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the game ends with you having to decide if you show dignity to your worst enemy or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm. I'm. I. I don't know. How far oh, you I am in the game? Oh, yeah, okay. I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't finished. I'm I'm arc four. I, I, right. Yeah, I, like I just I just finished three, so I haven't even played oh, the okay. first level uh, of four. How um, how relatively yeah. long is the is the game? Uh okay. So I had to respond to this on Reddit the other day. If you're a regular person who's played a regular amount of games, mm-hmm. right? It will be between five and eight or nine hours. Okay. Right? Um, I think. If you're really good at 3D platformers or intentionally trying to do everything really quickly, it will probably be a five-plus-hour game. But if you try to speed run, I actually don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't seen anyone try to super speed run it. Yeah, because you, you don't you don't have to play all the levels. You could just collect the minimum amount of pups. Yeah, and then and then just keep going. Yeah, yep. There's some levels you can skip. There's upgrades that um, you need to buy to go run faster, jump further, mm-hmm. um, and I'm I'm excited for the the players that do end up speed running and the meta of them deciding what coins to skip. Mm-hmm. But they can't skip all the coins because they need coins to buy the upgrades to run faster. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. The, buy. The, have you got? Have you bought the dash attack yet? Uh no. I I bought the other. I bought the ground pound. 
um, the boot time. I, I I don't know if it was it, it gives you extra height or a little bit longer. extra duration. Yeah, yeah. There is a duration okay? Yeah. yeah. And then um, I I bought a couple other things. But I I just I don't remember because they were uh, they were the earlier earlier on ones. But try to save up for the dash attack. Mm-hmm. Because I, I I have it I see I see it there uh, I, I'll, I'll I'll try I'll try it now because now that you recommended it to me because yeah. I was like oh I don't I uh, I don't know if I I'd actually use it and so yeah 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 okay yeah I'll, it works I'll, I'll only it in try. the sky so you have to you have to be in the mm-hmm. air to use it but it it's the fastest way to travel okay okay but it's we did it that way because it's a comes with a risk you can accidentally dash off the edge of a cliff. Or you mm-hmm. can dash over dash a platform, so it's one of those mechanics that are um, easy to do but hard to master and hard yeah. to abuse. You have to be better at the game to. But a lot of the more advanced players love that one. Um, yeah. Did you buy the piggy bank? Uh yes, I did. Yeah, to get more coins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the game to me feels. Um, relatively balanced. Like, like I said earlier, not too hard, not too easy. Oh, cool. Um, one of the things that I found super difficult was the the little side games, the where you're shooting the plungers for, uh, for like yeah. one pop. Yeah, the, uh, especially the, uh, the early on ones. My... I was I was standing there for at least 10, 20 minutes <laughs> trying to get. Uh, I'm trying to hard, get the gold, it? and I'm like, I, look, "Oh my okay. god!" There's. I'm just going to be honest. I give, give a quick, real, give the, a quick uh, rundown for for people uh, yeah. that well, don't know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. So some of the levels are bonus levels, and there's an old classic arcade game called Point Blank, and that's a good reference for these levels. You got like um, seven targets, and three pop up at a time and you have to shoot them down with your plunger as quickly as you can. And we're talking like seven seconds or something super fast. Mm -hmm. Um, Under 10 seconds is like a good time. And so it's over really quick, but it's done that way. So you just try again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And you end up getting muscle memory to try to get it faster and you end up preemptively shooting targets before they even pop up because like there's time and anyway so they're the bonus levels and there's a bunch of those in the game they're called bullseye bullseye different themed bullseye levels and Mm -hmm. i'm disappointed because i they were tuned to be really difficult But I'm like, oh, it's too difficult for people to get the mud pup. And so what I wanted done was the mud pup, I wanted to reward the mud pup for getting the silver prize Mm -hmm. and keep the gold one for like, just make that a shit ton of coins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way, people that are just trying to get all the mud pups, they can still do it with just getting the silver instead of the gold. But we ran out of time. We didn't have time to switch it. Yeah. So it's one of those little things. No, that no, like, no. Wow. I, I like it. Keep, yeah, keep keep it that way. No, no keep consolation okay. prize. Either, yeah, either either get okay. the gold or or you don't get it at all. That's it. Okay, good. So so the game feels very polished, right? Ah. It, it feel it feels like you've guys put a lot of effort. I think me personally, I've only encountered one bug, which was at mm. the end of. Um, at the end of a level, I go up on the rocks for for coins up there up top, and I ground pounded on top of the on top of the the cage, and then uh. my my game my game just like froze. It, it was fine. It was fine. It was like a uh. five second freeze, then it it it, it oh. come back up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So it was it was fine, but mm-hmm. I was like I was like oh. Yeah, that, the that's quest what I'm saying. Three? I only encountered that one bug, right? Which yeah, is well, okay. for, that's in the VR know. space is crazy good. You know, that's <laughs> that's that's fantastic, honestly. <laughs> and and it, it it didn't crash my game. It it rectified within five uh, seconds. You know, thank so, goodness. There's yeah, it, 
they have, that's I, good I can tell die. you guys really put effort and real polish in into this. Everyone at Spill, just a quick pause on the podcast. Uh, there was a recording error on my side, um, recording his camera. So for the rest of the podcast, all of Richie's footage was gone. The audio is still there and fine, but just the footage is uh, it, it was it was corrupted and and lost really. So for the rest of the podcast, it'll be Richie's beautiful smile. And um, so back to the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, lots of polish. From day one, I was like, "We're gonna once we get once we finish the game, we're gonna add another year on for polish." Mm-hmm. It didn't work out exactly that way. We end up adding polish while we finish, um, and but it was very yeah. So the philosophy with that is, and people were like, "Richard, this costs too much to do all these things. Let's just release it without it. People, it'll be fine." And I'm like, "No, because then it won't be remarkable, and then they won't tell yeah. people." And with platformers, um, if it doesn't reach a quality bar, it only ends up getting bought by platforming fans and mm-hmm. it doesn't break into mainstream. And then I'm like, what's the point of doing this? Because we won't get our money back if we only get bought by platforming fans. No. Um, bad respect to platforming fans. Thank you. Just... We need more sales than just platforming fans. And to do that, we need a ridiculous amount of polish so it feels great and enough people talk about it because they feel great when they play it and then more people will buy it. And so to me, the polish is like everything. There's no point doing it if it doesn't have a heap of polish. Like Mm -hmm. one of the little things that it's just people don't notice and it's like when you jump on an enemy, what what happens there? And it's, you get all the obvious things like VFX, of course, sound, yeah. of course, and some haptics, of course. But then there's like another six things behind the scenes. So for about 200, and I've watched like Jackie Chan. Um, Jackie Chan did a little documentary about how he makes his punches feel good when he was directing his old classic movies. And some of that is in there. It's even, we even call it the Jackie Chan effect in the code. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, that effect is when you make an impact, um, you um, at the point of impact, you, you hold for an extra couple of frames. Mm-hmm. And so in VR, because frames, there's so many frames, we wouldn't do it by frame. We'd do it by milliseconds. So... I think it was like 100 milliseconds of extra of pause time. And then uh, we don't just pause max, so for that amount of time, we make her animation slow down to like 5% of her full speed animation. So it's like a... And so just it's very, very subtle, but just makes that feel better. So in um, Street Fighter, when you do a a kick, the spinning Mm -hmm. kick, and you... It makes an impact. I think on the when you or if you kill them 100, percent I don't know, but the kick then goes in slow motion, so it's a little bit of a feeling like that. And then uh, flash you flash the enemy white for 100 milliseconds. Um, you freeze the enemy's animation and movement for a couple of hundred milliseconds. Yeah, then sound has to be like times to work well with those f- frozen um, animations and then you add, need to add some physics so depending on the enemy you need to add a bit of physics movement to the enemy to make them um, get pushed into a wall or something like that um, yeah so th- lots of little things like that to make it feel better than it, you know normally would yeah mm-hmm. um, wh- what was the what was your personal favorite aspect of the game? Is is it the level design, the sound, the uh, the mechanics, the, the little things like you just subscri- described? Yeah. It's always just been about the gameplay and level design. It, mm-hmm. it would annoy the art department. Well, not annoy. They love level design too, but um, everything came for, but everything came before, uh, sorry. Nothing was more important than the gameplay and level design. So mm-hmm. if there's ever a decision where there was a conflict, we're like, 
well, it's for level design. Yeah. Um, and like even the hero, we played around with a few different kind of characters and the one that felt best for gameplay was the, was the one with long hair. And so we're like, well, that's easy. That's our character. So we're locking that one in. And so, yeah, everything's gameplay focused. Yeah. That's probably my favorite part. Um, mm -hmm. the, the parts of the levels where you have to use your gadgets, you, you get the power, gadget power-ups um, to use them at the same time. I mean, I love those moments. And the whole game was going to be like that. We, you were meant to, we were going to start the game with both uh, Max and your gadget. Like, oh, okay. You would get, we, the intent was every level had both, right? And then, but time came, the first testing session, and people are just using their gadgets, <laughs> yeah, not really yeah. focusing on Max. And when we did try to do some difficult platforming, it's like, oh, you can't do both at the same time at this level of difficulty. Um, and because it, it feels like patting your head and rubbing your belly. And it's quite uncomfortable. It's really tough for some people. Yeah. And so yeah. we're just like, okay, we just make them more, more like power ups and you have them only sometimes. And yeah. Um, but yeah. when we do have that moment, that's probably my favorite part of the game and the shop i love the shop but deciding mm -hmm. oh are you going to buy this to get even more coins are you going to invest your money or are you going to get that dash attack yeah <laughs> no i i gotta get it i gotta get it because you're you're pushing this dash attack so much i have uh, to uh, as soon as soon as we're done here i'm gonna i'm gonna go finish recording so i'll, okay. uh, I'll definitely buy it talk real quick um about the the bosses really oh, yeah. and um just e e just either the character the story about around the bosses or the unique kind of abilities per boss yeah sure so the bosses came from dozens of concept sketches uh and we soon realized there's a little bit of a theme recurring with them and that is that they had they were like anthropods that's and they're animals that have exoskeletons. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, that works. And then we're like, oh, but our octopus, they don't have exoskeletons, but we're like, this one does because it's got its big brain and it needs a hard exterior for his brain. So it's not really an anthropod, but the robotic form is. Um, and my favorite boss is the roboctopus. Uh, it's this giant brain uh, encased in glass and when the concept artist sketched it it was all this beautiful green glass and i was just like this is such a good character i can't wait for him yeah. to be a boss um i was i was a bit disappointed because then i realized astro Bart and lucky's tail had big octopuses and i mm -hmm. didn't I oh of, okay and I kind of yeah. didn't realize until after we had gone all the way. And I'm like, oh, far out. This is one of those things where it just looks like we copied it. And yeah, it was a genuine, cool. didn't, it was a genuine, didn't intend to. Um, but robot um, octopus do make good bosses because they have that intelligence and they have these big tentacles. So they are interesting. But um, so, yeah, the others, probably my favorite boss for the gameplay though is the crab boss um, where it's got the platforms on the lake and you have to jump mm -hmm. across them to chase up to it and then you get the gadget and it shoots volleys of missiles and it's like an old arcade game where there's a boss battle and all these missiles would be coming towards you and you have to shoot them before they get to you Yeah, um, and um, yeah I, I just I don't know I enjoy it and then the panic of this giant steel ball coming towards you and you have to yeah. get off the shots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah when um when i was doing uh stubbins um right you have the helicopters 
flying oh, yeah. at you and yeah and i'm spamming that and then i get yeah. the, the 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 big bomb and i'm like i'm like okay like, it's getting too close this is, this is this the first time it's gotten too close you know yeah but uh yeah as we as we wrap up and and finish this here um so so you said you plan on supporting max mustard you know well on to the future um and is there is there a release schedule or a, a content yeah. schedule? That, yep. Oh, is there one that's officially out or just in 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 uh, in toast um, that there's one? No, it's not officially out to exact dates because mm-hmm. things can go wrong. So we don't give out yeah. exact dates mm-hmm. until we're like like highly very confident. Um, but a lot of our team are now moved onto the PlayStation and PC port of Max Mustard. And we expect that to be out in late quarter two, so I guess near mid year mm-hmm. on PlayStation. And it's so c- encouraging because there's so many PlayStation VR fans out there that are desperate for um, for this game. And I'm like, oh, it makes me feel good, and I feel wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and there's. There's a lot more Oculus uh, Meta Quest headsets than there are PlayStation headsets, but if you compare the two different Reddits, right, to get an indication mm. of the percentage of their user bases that are engaged, they're not too crazy from each other. Like yeah. PlayStation VR players, I think, have a higher retention than the Meta Quest players. So mm-hmm. for developers out there i'm like don't dismiss playstation vr because just because there's maybe i don't know if you look at the 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 estimates it might be like 10x the number of headsets but it might only be 60 40 percentage of highly engaged player base yeah. like okay and yeah i I I don't know. I'm pretty excited for, for this getting out on PlayStation. And so it's, we're, we're it's, it's, it's coming paint. out on on Quest uh, first, right. and then yeah. is it PlayStation and uh, Steam at the same time, or one before the other? Probably at the same time. Okay. PlayStation okay. and PC. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, is, we're there, is there a projection have, on that? Uh, like what time when? Yeah, yeah. Do you? Uh, do you all, is it like all I would know is quarter two mid year. Okay, all right. Like, we we need to um, check it runs perfectly, high resolution. Mm-hmm. Um, decide if we need foveated rendering or not, um, because if it runs at extremely high resolution at a high frame rate, we probably don't need to spend extra time on on uh, the foveated rendering. Even it gets people are asking for it all the time, but I'm like, if it runs with a really fast frame rate without it, we'd prefer just to get it out. Um, yeah, and and P, yeah, so post processing it needs it needs um, some graphical upgrades here and there. The haptics have to be improved. PlayStation, um, like, yeah, we don't want to botch. The release we have one shot to make a good impression for PlayStation. Um, it's unforgiving. It's mm-hmm. it's hard to come back from a botched release or a low quality release, and so, well, yeah, we wanted to really focus on that. Um, and but meanwhile, we're working on the Richie's Plank version for PlayStation VR, and um, yeah, Apple headset for Richie's Plank. Um, yeah. Oh That's okay. A, oh, so so it is. It, it Richie's plank is coming to Apple Apple Vision Pro. Yep. Okay. Wow. Have, it, not it, without it, challenges. This challenges yeah, though. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh yeah. Like um, the play space is, is a lot smaller. Is Max Mustard even in that discussion at all? Because I know it's it's obviously we, way too different. We things. will, but mm-hmm. there's no controllers on the Apple Vision yeah, Pro. Yeah. 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 And when you need the fine motor skills you need you need the joysticks and the buttons like we would have we, we would have to do a port that is to, 
different gameplay. Yeah. It'd be like mm-hmm. jumping with pinching or something like that. And it would just not, I don't know, it'd be a different game. Last couple of questions. Um, sure. You, you, said, you said you started uh, Toast. Was it, it was just you and your wife? Yeah. Right? Yep, just um, us. What, what advice do you have to the early devs right now or the solo person, two team devs that are just trying to get off the ground now? What's, what's the single mm-hmm. one piece of advice you can give them? When, when you choose, I said it before, when you choose what game to make, like you need to consider your marketing before you even make the game. Like what will be your marketing hooks? Mm-hmm. Um, you should be thinking about that before even coding. Um, why will people talk about it? What will it be the best in the world at? And that's if you want sales. Like if you don't yeah. want sales, if <laughs> it's a fun project, don't don't care about that. Just do what makes you happy. Like that's far more important. Um, but that on the business side, it would be that, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's VR specific, it's tough. And it's tough to get on the meta store. Like mm-hmm. really tough. And we already had a title that's had helped us build a decent relationship with them. And it's still really tough. Like it's, um, yeah, I guess don't feel disheartened. Just, yeah, I don't know the answer yeah. there. But um, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, that's kind of just know your market and just keep pushing, you know. It's it, it's a it's a grind to get on the store. So it might even be important to show success before you even ask to get on there. Mm-hmm. Like show that you've got good sales on Steam, um, and that way they're like, oh yeah, we want you on the store. Yeah, come with us. Yeah. yeah. Um. What What are your top three games of all time? that aren't VR? And then what are your top three that are uh, VR? uh, Okay. Number one would be uh, Total Annihilation, which is a real-time strategy game. Mm -hmm. And I still play that in the form of an open-source game called Beyond All Reason, which is an open-source RTS, big robot battles. It's great helps me unwind even though it's intense um uh, super mario world on the super nintendo Mm -hmm. Uh, this first platformer i played that i just just loved and um obsessed over and number three uh can i do four i'll do super mario kart on the super nintendo Uh and papers please by lucas pope okay have yeah. you ever heard of this? No, yeah, I, yeah, I have, yeah. And, yeah. And I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if you're aware. Of, there's kind of a um, VR version that came out recently called Border Box. That's that. Yeah. It's it, it's basically that same thing. I don't know if you played that at all, but yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's 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 a, that's a great one. It. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just such a powerful game. Yeah. If you, if you don't know, but yeah, for people listening, don't know about it. It's you are a passport control officer in Soviet Russia. And it's dark and cruel, and there's a love story that heart breaks your heart. But the game mechanic is this person turns up, and you have to check their passport, check their credentials, and decide to stamp their entry visa, whether approved or denied. And mm-hmm. yeah, it it gets really dark, and um, yeah, I love it. Yeah. And then, uh, what about your top three? VR oh. games. Um, I'm going to give you four because okay. I gave away all four of them on uh, our Twitter account today. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, to celebrate. So one of them, uh, there's Super Hot. This is no no water. Super Hot Beat Saber, um, Compound, and Thrill of the Fight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the boxing game. Compound's probably the most unusual un- like one on there. It's a, like a it's a pixel shooter, but I just love it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, I've, I've came across it, but I never, I never played it. I never tried it at yeah, all. Yeah, so. it's it's a shooter, and it's not multiplayer. Like, mm-hmm. I kind of don't have time for the multiplayer games. Um, if I've got ten minutes to play a game, I don't want to spend seven minutes in a lobby. Like, yeah. I just want to play, and yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I'm not good enough for the multiplayer games because I don't play them enough either. So I'm like, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Back to that, back to that target, um, target audience, you know, basically. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much right. for being on. It was a, it was a pleasure talking to you. It was uh, great where can out. people yeah. find you, um, plug all the, the socials and everything. When does Max Mustard come out? Yeah. It comes out 22nd of March. Yeah. Search for Max Mustard on the meta store. Um, but it's, we're all, our Twitter account has gone crazy. It only just started and it's it's blowing up. Um, so it's x.com max mustard game. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. This is fun yeah, hanging no, what, out. What, no, yeah, but I appreciate it. And do you do you have an own personal Twitter that you use or oh. anything? Um, yeah, I'm on X as Easties, so slash Easties, E-A-S-T-E-S. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Worlds Through a Lens podcast. All the social media links for me, uh, Richie, the game, his company will all be down in the description down below. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I want to reply and I'm going to try to reply to every comment I can. Uh, Give us a like on whatever podcast platform you're currently listening to this on. Um, Follow me on Twitter. But other than that, thank you guys again so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.